Avoid the lottery of FIFA points. Head over to u 7 bikecom Use the code TVM at checkout for a 5% off. What is going on, guys? TVM here. Welcome to another video. It's that time. We have new information regarding FIFA Ultimate Team for FIFA 20. Bit of a weird one this year. They're not doing a live event. I know I'm very dark right now. I'm on a dark background. I've got a black shirt on. Probably not the best idea. I just look like a floating head. But um, they're not doing the usual live stream. You know, we're revealing cards. We're revealing card designs. These are new features, blah, blah, blah. It's literally a Pitch Notes article. Uh, I've read through some of it. Um, they've tweeted a few things with uh, to, re with regards to like an XP system and things like that. I've played a game recently that tried that and it didn't work. We'll see how that goes. But um, I've read a few things. I haven't read everything. I thought, you know what, why am I doing this? I'll just make a video. We'll read through it together. So if you have seen it, you know what's coming. But you're going to see my reaction to it. If you haven't seen it, we're going to experience this together. So, there's a lot of reading here. And this is why I wish they'd done it as a video. But uh, here we go. So, Tyler Blair, creative director of Ultimate Team. Uh, year to introduce, blah, blah, blah. Um, he wants to, or they want to as a team. I've been looking, they've been finding ways to provide our fans with short, medium and long-term goals to progress their club throughout the season, allowing our fans to customize and show their own unique style on and off the pitch, which alludes to customization, uh, ensures that there's a better way to play with and against your friends, uh, which suggests fresh game modes of some description, and then refresh our squad screen by making it more integrated to the club and transfer market. That kind of just sounds like they've done a, um, a UI like uh, overhaul, so they've just changed the menus altogether. Uh, something that uh, it, that may or may not be a slight dig at Pez, because Pez of uh, fans of Pez have been asking for their menus to be changed for years and they just never do. So I don't know whether that's a dig at them. Uh, season objectives. So this is the first new feature, and this is something that you can go, you can take this to the bank and you can go back through all of my videos and check. Literally, I've been asking for this since FIFA 13, maybe even before that. But I've made videos in the past, and I, I, don't, I don't know if I can try and find one to put in the. In the um, in the description, I probably won't be able to find it. I mean, I've got like four and a half thousand videos on the channel, right? But I literally made graphics one year where there's like a locked player, and next to it you have score 100 goals, etc. They they have it. It's here finally. Um, I don't know how good it'll be, but let's let's start reading. Uh, to start, I want to give an overview of our new season objectives feature in Foot 19. We've seen how incredibly popular objectives have been in the Foot community. Season objectives are part of our wider redefined objective system in Foot 20, which will allow you to progress towards progress towards rewards. There you go, I missed that word. Uh, for your ultimate team beyond a daily or week-to-week -week window. Our first season of Foot 20 will kick off on the 19th of September. Not for me. Um, early access and all that nonsense, of course. Uh, allowing anyone playing Foot 20 through the EA Access trial to begin their progress ahead of the worldwide launch on the 27th of September. Oh, okay. Maybe it is for me then. I thought it was... I thought, oh, hang on. Maybe PC users might get it a day earlier than that again. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. Uh, my first season... The first season uh, will run until the end of October. Oh, okay, so they've got their own defining season. That makes sense. So you pick the game up early access, 19th of September. Maybe the 18th if you're on PC. I'd have to look into it. Um, and then it'll run for the rest of that and then till the end of October. Uh, when you log into Ultimate Team after creating your club, you'll find the new Objectives Hub accessible from the Foot Central menu. Inside the hub... You'll be able to track your progress towards season rewards, jump to the next season objective that you can choose to complete, as well as see your progression against milestones and foundation objectives. So, uh, this is the screen. Now, we can't, obviously it would be nice if they had a little bit of a, a video that just sort of scrolled through so we could see a few things here or there. But it... I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm looking at, really. Um... So you've got Season Rewards tab on the left. This is Season Objectives. It says Group Reward. One, one to watch. Right, okay. So this is so if you complete this, what? right, now I know what I'm looking at. So if you score with a Serbian, um, Goodbye Bundesliga, don't know what that is. It takes Finesse, obviously score a Finesse shot. Winning in Rivals. 
I'm guessing that means win a rivals match would would explain a lot. And then uh, welcome to Madrid, maybe buy a Madrid player or something. So you gain all that XP and you build up and uh, whatever level you get at, I'm guessing different levels gives you rewards. That's kind of simple, I suppose. Um, gives you just gives you things to do and to tick off constantly. And if the, it's kind of like foot swaps, but a workable thing. So in foot swaps, you're just waiting for cards to drop. You complete objectives, you get them. This... This is knocking off things in game and there's always something to do by the looks of things. So they've got foundations, they've got milestones, season rewards. I'm not sure whether there's going to be daily, weekly anymore. Maybe they've done away with that. Maybe I don't know. I, let's read on. Uh, we're, we're dwelling too much. Oh, I can see the XP gift down below. Uh, in FIFA 20, objectives can be grouped together by themes and tasks, individual objectives, you complete will earn you XP and rewards as well as help progress towards completing the objective group it is in. Completing groups of objectives will be key to your unlocking larger rewards to help you grow, customize, or advance your ultimate team. Before we move on, this sounds really good because it, it just gives you another reason to not put money into the game, which as far as EA are concerned, I'm guessing that they're sort of they're doing this with like gritted teeth, but at the moment, we don't know what the rewards are. We don't know how good it'll be. However, I mean, like, a group reward here, you get a lone Jovic. Do you care? I, I don't think I would at any point during the game. I don't think I would care about a lone Jovic for nine games. But it's to the greater good, right? That's not the ult ultimate reward. That's just a reward for completing that one set. And then you move on, you get another one. It could be a pack. It could be coins. Like they say, it could be customization. So you could unlock a kit or a specific kit or boots or whatever. I don't know whether boots are going to be a thing, but it did say a, a way to customize a lot more. We're going to have to put up with this GIF at the bottom. I don't think I can... No, I can't stop it, unfortunately. So, um, season objectives will be released in four ways. Daily, weekly, season, and dynamic objectives. That answers my question then, doesn't it? So we do keep the daily, we keep the weekly. We've been given season and whatever dynamic objectives are. Uh, daily objectives, we know. Weekly objectives... Uh, we'll read it anyway. Uh, groups are objectives which have rewards and XP associated with them. Oh, with the completion of individual objectives released each week. In case you miss one week's objectives, they will stay active in the game for a second week, with the exception of the last week of a season, which will expire when the season does. That makes perfect sense. Uh, season objectives are longer term challenges to fi finish and from the time they are put live, they will remain live until the last day of the season. If I struggle, it's because li English literally isn't my first language and that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Finally, dynamic objectives are special time-limited release objectives, objective groups rather, uh, which will not have a regular release schedule and will end after a set period of time determined by the dynamic objective group. These could be tied to campaigns or real-world events that are happening in the game during the course of the season. So, from what that sounds like, dynamic objectives will be released when a promo is released or when there are European finals, World Cup finals, uh, maybe Champions League finals, Europa League finals, that kind of thing. That's what it sounds like to me. So that's that's cool. So we're, we're going to get a lot. To, there's a lot to do by that sound of things. There, there is a lot to do. Um, on top of that, of course, Rivals remains. Uh, weekend League is still a thing. I don't know whether they've changed anything there. Squad Battles is still a thing, and apparently there's uh, some news on that within this. This is a long-ass video, and I do apologize, but this is literally the most content EA have given us ever. Um, I genuinely wish I could stop that from moving. It's given me a headache, but uh, there we go. Uh, completing objectives and earning XP will progress your level on the Season Rewards tab. In our first season, there will be 30 levels, which... Wow. Each with its own season reward or reward choice. There will be a diverse mix of rewards available in the objectives feature, ranging from packs, players, club customization content, or other items to help you progress your club, such as match coin boosts, which they're available through the catalog. Maybe they're getting rid of the catalog. I don't know. How awesome would it be if you could carry over your EA coin thing? Uh, and use that as XP. That would be overpowered as hell, but um, that's not going to be a thing. Don't quote me on that. Um, I have lost where I was. Uh, there will be a diverse mix of rewards available in objectives feature ranging from packs, players, club customization content, or other items to help you progress, such as match... Right, okay, I've already read that. Uh, we're looking to balance season progression to appeal to all types of foot players, from those who play once or twice a week... 
to players regularly competing in foot champions or division rivals. As you level up throughout the season, the bigger both the challenges and rewards will become. You'll be able to track your overall progress and see all level rewards in the season reward screen for the duration of the season. Just a bunch of jargon. Right, here we go. This is some interesting stuff down here. So, uh, that's not all for objectives this year. We've also introduced two other ways to unlock rewards for your play with foundation and milestone objectives. Right, this is why I was I'm kind of interested in this because I, I just can't really... I don't know what that would be. So foundation objectives are the place for new players to learn the ropes of FIFA Ultimate Team with organized learning objectives grouped together by subjects such as trading, team building, and chemistry. Trading is a laugh because they ban you for trading in this game because they think you're buying and selling coins. Let's move on. I'm not salty about that. Milestones objectives are long-term objective groups which are not tied to any season. Once a milestone objective group is created in FIFA tw Foot 20, sorry, you'll be able to continue making progress against these objectives, unlocking their rewards at your pace from player feedback. We know that many of you have been looking for more ways to progress in Foot and Milestones allows us, or allow us to celebrate and reward key moments in every player's Foot Club. This is phenomenal. If it's kind of what I think it's going to be, or what they're saying it's going to be, that is insane because again it's something that nearly everybody and myself included has wanted for the longest time a reason to play you know even now if this was in fifa 19 there would still be think that you know the season objectives would still be an ongoing thing we could still complete those to gain whatever we you know whatever they give us but another one is that those milestone objectives, they're going to be there for the entire duration. As soon as they drop one, it's there. You can work towards it at your leisure. So, for instance, they could drop a milestone Van Dyke. I've just seen Van Dyke at the bottom, so that's why I picked him. But they could drop a, a, like a milestone Van Dyke, 98 rated or whatever. I don't know how it's going to work, but let's just say, for instance, they did. You then have to score 500 goals with Liverpool players. You have to play um, 500 games with a Liverpool defender. And you have to score, I don't know, you have to assist 500 goals with Dutch uh, fullbacks or something. Just whatever. But it's something to just chip away at constantly. It might not be that difficult. It might be easier. They might, the reward might not be as good. But either way, there's a reason to keep playing. And that is fantastic. Now, we have customizable options. This is interesting because the customization in Ultimate Team notoriously isn't that great. Now, from what I'm seeing, just instantly straight away, it's not that amazing. Although I have seen a few more, like the the image behind the goal and stuff. I was kind of hoping they would give us like boot options and things like that. But let's read it. Um, we've also added new ways to personalize your club and truly show off your unique style on the pitch. In the past, when playing foot, we've had a number of custom kits designed by some amazing artists, which have... Uh, been loved by our fans, with some of our custom kits being among the most popular kits in Ultimate Team. In, F in Foot 20, we're going to take things to a new level with eight club customization options to mix and match. You'll be sure to find options that help you show off your club in a more unique way. By adding new stadium themes, TIFOs, whatever, they're, they're, that's the thing behind the, the goal. You know, that when you've got Ronaldo and he's just stood behind the goal like that massive thing. Um, unique custom balls, new crests, oh yeah, uh, there's that foot 20 crest, cool, um, I didn't even see that, celebration, of course, I looked at celebration and I thought, well, celebrations have been in the game for ages, but no, you can add custom celebrations by the looks of things, add custom celebrations to the game, um, there, yeah, there are going to be thousands of combinations to personalize your club, that's decent, there's not an awful lot they can do in terms of customization because of licensing the things, but it's nice that they've... I mean, that elbow drop, obviously, I don't know what it is. Maybe, hopefully, they'll show you on the card when you get it to, so you can see what it is. But um, that's cool. Uh, so you can add custom celebrations only available in foot via... I'm guessing you can pack them. So even though this is great, and I'm, I'm not against it at all, it now adds more items by the sounds of things into packs meaning packing things like contracts and squad fitness and fitness cards are, are actually going to be a lot less frequent does that make sense so you're not going to have thousands of contracts stored in your club anymore in fact at the very beginning of the game you may struggle 
if these are available in packs. Maybe they're not. Uh, what else have we got? There we go. That's cool as hell. Uh, if you're a football purist interested in finding authentic customization options or someone whose style isn't as traditional, we've got loads of new customization options that will give you an opportunity to create your own environment that feels unique to your club. I'm one of those purists. I love simplicity. I probably won't have one of these things behind the goal. And I think I'm boring, basically. Both stadium themes and TIFOs are now... Uh, oh, new, sorry, reading's difficult. New additions in Foot 20. Your stadium theme will feature on the sidelines and in the crowd throughout the match. Your Is it a TIFO or TIFO? I'm going to go with TIFO. Your TIFO will feature in pre-match intros and after goals. There will be some replays which feature your TIFO in the background. Okay. Uh, we're getting... We're getting down to the stuff that not many of us are going to really care about, I think. Celebrations you assign to your club are assigned to the uh, X and A button in gameplay and will be easily accessible after you score a goal. That's cool. Assigning your custom celebration won't remove the ability to trigger any other celebrations with their assigned button combinations. So that's cool. So you can easily just press X or A. Wait. You can just press A, sorry, because obviously it's not X or A, it's depending on your platform. So A for an Xbox, X for PlayStation, which does suggest to me, unless I don't know the buttons on a, on a Switch. I mean, either way, maybe I'm reading too much into it. It's important to note that ball selection you make will only be seen on your own screen. And that is brilliant because I've seen like the 8-bit ball and stuff like that. Now, I'm quite particular with my balls. And uh, I like them to be clean. <laughs> this is taking a turn. Uh, but I don't like... I Basically, let's just leave it there. I just don't like them like multicolored or too dark to see. Let's just leave it. Um, this is done to ensure that we do not create any visibility issues for any other players. There we go. Uh, also, not all stadiums in foot support all customization features. Look out for the icons on stadium items to know which types of customization each stadium supports. To ensure you have location... Uh, have a location that contains the support. F yeah, blah, blah, blah. So basically, this image here, Anfield, uh, that has two little icons above it. I think one is a paintbrush and the other one is like just an image. So that looks like it's fully customizable. Quote, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I would have to get the game. But um, that's what it... That, yeah, there's little icons above, so that's what it looks like. Um, now... I've seen bits of this. Uh, you can track th uh, games against your friends, and I think they have house rules in Ultimate Team now as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, we'll we'll very quickly skip over this. Uh, you know, skip through it, I should say. Uh, one of the things that I'm really excited to talk about is the launch of Foot Friendlies, a new hub to play foot with your friends locally or online, as well as head-to-head -head online in traditional 11v11 gameplay with or without house rules. Right, okay. He confused me there when he said 11v11. So, what, like pro clubs or just 11v11 just and you can, like normal? Um, matches within foot friendlies do not consume contracts or fitness, which is really good. Um, wait, so is foot friendlies just you against your mates? With your friends locally or online as well as head-to-head -head online in traditional? If it's just you against your friends, I'm not that bothered because I don't really play against... Although it kind of would be... I, I guess you could set it up against subs and stuff. I don't know. But um, anyway, um, the yeah, losses don't count towards your club record and they do not carry over injuries and red cards, making them the perfect place to experiment with your new players. We've also paired the mode with deeper stats tracking in friendlies so that you'll have a, a one-stop spot to know which of your friends is truly the best at ultimate team. That would be cool if they added that for other things. So if I, like, foot champions in particular, I would love to see stats. It, it would be, it, you know, just to know whether I'm playing bad or whether I'm actually playing all right, but I've been unlucky. That would be cool. Uh, this is obviously another thing to do with that. Uh, as I mentioned above, the mode features 11v11 classic gameplay uh, with the true... But the true fun in Foot Friendlies comes when you branch out into some custom house rules in Foot 20 Select House Rules modes launched in FIFA 19. And four new modes designed specifically for Foot 20 or FIFA 20 will be available for you to choose from. Awesome. 
What's this down here? Is that our first? That's our first look at gameplay. Oh, oh, that looked a bit dodgy. There must be some sort of speed boost on that shot because that looked a little bit. I mean, that that literally looks like FIFA Online three or something. Um, max chemistry and swaps will be two exclusive ways to play in Ultimate Team, while Mystery Ball and King of the Hill will be released in Foot Pro Clubs and Kickoff. Right, uh, along with already established headers and volleys, survival, long range, no rules, and classic match. In max chemistry, now I can tell you exactly what this is, chemistry doesn't matter. Now, what I'd love to know is, can you play this online against other people that aren't my friends? Because if it is, that is fun. It means that all those cards you've got stored in your club, all those untradeable cards that are useless because they don't fit into your team, you can now play with because chemistry doesn't matter. That's literally what max chemistry is. They've, they've removed the restrictions. Everyone is happy to play with everyone and everybody gets 10 chem or 100 chem. Um, swaps is, and again, I've read this already, you take three of their players, they take three of yours, but they're completely random. So in that one, it's only a one game, it's not a permanent thing, but in that one game, three of their players will replace three of yours in the same positions. So maybe you'll take a centre-back, a goalkeeper and a striker, and they'll take the same from you. Could be your best player, could be your worst player. You could be getting their best or worst. Mystery ball. Um, we'll read this a little bit because I kind of think that's what that, that image is down below. Uh, brings the element of surprise each time the ball leaves play. As it comes in as a new mystery ball type, each ball has a custom goal value that ranges from one to three goals and boosts the player in possession with over-the-top effects that take their shooting, dribbling, passing, sprint speed, or the all-powerful all-ball, which brings each of the other effects at the same time. So that's why that looks stupidly overpowered, because that ball has literally made Vinicius Jr. 99 rated uh, across the board for every single stat going. And that uh, has counted as three goals because it says in the top right there that it's going to count as three. I mean, it is fun. It's, it's something a little bit extra. Uh, King of the Hill, uh, basically, if you keep the ball in that zone for, you know, one second, it counts as one goal, I think. And then two goals counts as two goals and then three goals counts as uh, three seconds counts as three seconds. So you have to keep it in there and then you have like a times three. So the next time you score a goal, you get three goals, that kind of thing. I think that's the way it works. Um, but let's move on from this because that's all the stuff that, you know, we'll probably mess around with for five minutes and then get bored with. Easier squad management. This has been 20 minutes already and I do apologize. The squad screen has allowed... How far are we down this? Just over halfway? Wow. Um, the squad screen has, as always, has always been... There we go. Has always been one of the key experiences when play, playing FIFA Ultimate Team. And that's no joke, because I spend more time looking at my team than I do playing the game. Hopefully the gameplay is good this year, and it'll be the other way around. Uh, but still, as Ultimate Team has grown and expanded through the years, we've added... Lots of new and useful functions to the squad, but fundamentally, the overall experience of using the squad screen has become a bit too complex. Has it? Has it? But fundamentally, the overall experience of using the squad screen has become a bit too complex. I'm not convinced by that. Uh, we looked at the key ways people were using the squad screen and addressed many of the core flaws, flows, Many of the core flows, which had proven more challenging for players. Are they even speaking English at this point? Our starting point here was to find a way to truly integrate your squad, club and transfer market in a single experience that makes managing who goes into your squad a quicker and more integrated part of the game. I don't really understand what they're getting at because... I mean, you've got the tabs above, so you go into your squad, you can skip over to the transfer market straight away, club, custom... I mean, that's cool. That's that's cool, but they, I mean, why do we need a paragraph to explain that? Um, is that the card design? They've not said that that's not the card design. That looks like the card design. It looks exactly the same as this year's card design, but instead of FIFA or Foot19 or whatever it is in the background, we've got that design instead. I'm all right with it, though. It looks relatively clean, if that is the card design. Select on playing player in foot 20 and pressing R1 or RB will take you directly to your club, filtered to the position selected where appropriate. From there, you can refine the results with a quick press of triangle or Y and access the complete set of unfiltered... Right, okay, so if I want to swap a striker in my team, I press 
I, I select the striker and then go to RB and it'll take me to a list of my strikers in my club, which is awesome. Uh, you know, just quality of life more than anything, which is cool. Oh, they've added a wheel. By pressing L1 or LB instead, you will navigate to the transfer market, which will be pre-filtered to the position you're trying to fill and with a coin balance that doesn't exceed your current maximum for buy it now. I mean, that's kind of pointless, really, but, you know, they're trying, I guess. Um, quickly enabling a search for your players who might want, yeah, might be what you're looking for. Uh, if you want to get more specific with your search, we've brought in the full transfer market filters to refine your search and enable you to have the same experience that you're used to. So they've literally gone and changed the whole thing. The menus are not even remotely the same. So compare price, player instructions, send to my club, apply recommending consumable. I mean, that's just, they've, they've added a wheel as opposed to just a drop-down menu, which doesn't really make that much difference at all. But from from what it sounds like, at least, um, they've just, they've, they've tried to make it a lot more user-friendly. Uh, maybe it will be. It'll take a little bit of time getting used to. I'm sure it will be. Uh, the player action menu has been completely redesigned. Yeah, we've been through this just now. Right, so I think that we're going to get to squad battles in a second, which should be interesting. They've changed the FIFA point logo. I don't know why that is the thing that I noticed more than anything, but that, that look right here at the bottom, they changed it. It's not three things anymore, it's a triangle. It's not a triangle, it's a square on its side. Anyway, um, for anyone looking for the manager, manager on the squad, uh, he hasn't been removed, just added to the dock with your subs and reserves. Oh yeah, so manager's no longer on the left, he's over, I'm pointing with my finger as if you can see what I'm doing. He's no longer over here, he's down here, uh, which I don't suppose really makes that much of a difference, but thank you very much. Overall in foot 20, the full squad screen experience is greatly improved and we are excited for you to get your hands on it and try it out. Awesome. Squad battles. Since the launch in foot 18, squad battles has proven to be one of our most popular modes. Really? Only because you're making us play it with objectives, but okay. Uh, in Foot20, you'll see a new interface, uh, which puts a better emphasis on the details of the squad you're about to face. You'll see the top three players from each squad, some details on the current tactical setup and formation, the kits and stadium, as well as the ratings for the squad and their chemistry displayed more clearly. Those opponent squads... Uh, we'll feature their customization as well with Tifo Stadium and all that nonsense involved. So, nothing. I mean, it's it's more of a career mode vibe, this. Uh, is what I'm getting from that there. But, um, yeah, okay. That's fine. Uh, in addition to the improved interface for opponent selection, we've made some changes to the fundamentals of squad battles, which should improve things for people by enabling easier access to playing out your matches on your schedule. A, that would get me playing it a lot more because I hate the fact that it's just four games and then wait uh, and, and you have to play a certain amount by a certain time, etc, etc. It's kind of why I'm not a massive fan of, of Weekend League because you have to cram them all into one go. But they've not really mentioned anything about Rivals or Weekend League, so I would imagine that that's not changing. Um, to start, we've removed the time timed refreshes in Squad Battles for Foot 20. You will now be able to refresh four new squads whenever you want. Woo! That's awesome. Big fan of that. Uh, until you hit your maximum of 10 refreshes for the weekly competition, which is fine because that's 40 games. Job done. Uh, while those first 10 refreshes are the only squads which will count towards your weekly competition standards, you will be able to continue to refresh and get new opponent squads to work on completing objectives for just some of the... F that's brilliant. So if you do have some season objectives or whatever dynamic objectives that they've added that requires squad battles, you can then go into games after you've finished all of your games, if you are that crazy enough to play all 40 of them, you can then continue to play to work towards those, which is cool as hell. Uh, we've also included the Team of the Week as a recurring squad battles opponent, which, along with the featured squad battle, you'll now be able to replay if desired to try and improve your final score. You'll need to balance... Risk and reward when you rematch and replace your previous score in an attempt to earn more points. Push yourself higher 
up the leaderboards and gain better rewards. So if you fail to beat them first time round, you can try it again and then you just basically bank whatever it one is the best. Sounds simple enough. Right, so pre-match setup, we've designed our... I mean, I'm knackered at this point. Uh, we've de we've redesigned our pre-match flow for matchmaking in an online match. Now in Foot20, you'll see new options when it comes time to select your kits. You will have the option to select playing against your opponent in your other kit for a guaranteed match experience or to play against your opponent in one of their chosen kits. The kits your opponent is using will not be displayed before the match starts. Behind the scenes will use logic to evaluate the color of the kit you are wearing to choose your kit. I don't understand the whole point. Why, why would I want to play in other people's kits? Now in Foot20 you'll see new options when it comes to time to select your kits. You'll have the option to play, to select playing against your opponent in your other kit for a guaranteed match experience. So basically, I can choose two kits, home and away, and I can, like, like you're doing Foot Champs now, and you'll just play against those. But if you want a, like a real world experience, you choose their kits? I whatever okay um i don't understand why anyone would want that i really don't because surely you just choose your it doesn't matter uh bulk quick sale of consumables how long has it been brilliant we've added an option to the game to allow the bulk quick sale of consumables in your club when browsing your club's consumables you'll have the option in the quick sell menus to quick sell multiple items at the same time uh, this will greatly reduce the time and effort for players when, yeah, uh, you know, I don't even need to read on. That's genius. Finally. Thank you. Would be It would be awesome if we could have a bulk list as well. Maybe in FIFA 26. Uh, but, um, you know, like I could tag, I don't know, 10 squad fitnesses and I want to list them up for a thousand coins each. Bang. Do -do 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 -do. Gone. 10 in one go. That would be insane. Maybe it wouldn't be insane for the market, but it would be insane for me. Now, in terms of foot champions, have they changed anything? From the start of foot champions in foot 20 and through the year we plan to have more to do we plan to have more to do with the foot champions red players earned as part of the weekly rewards yeah that that needs to be a thing because there's so many times you get red players and they just sit there um to kick things off in foot 20 we will ensure that the champion sbcs are in the game from launch there will be an sbc to submit any five champions items have i said champions league once before i do apologize uh to submit any five champions items for 83 to 86 rated champions players additionally we will have an sbc with requirements to submit an 81 rated squad for a champions player to receive a player pick 86 plus player pick 86 plus that's good it's very good so there we go they're basically going to have what they've got now in the game from the beginning but they'll have a player pick and i believe it's a pack right now uh, so that's cool, and it's for an 81-rated squad, so it shouldn't take too long to get there. Maybe a, a few weeks. Division Rivals. Whew. For our Division... Why couldn't they have done this as a video, really? Uh, for our Division Rivals players, we've got a few tweaks to the way that things will work in Foot20. First, we've changed some of the skill rating requirements for Divisions in Foot20. So... Uh, have they? I'm pretty sure that's the same. I mean, if it's not the same, it looks the same. My current skill rating on my road to glory, I think, is 1720-something. Um, I keep fluctuating between 2 and 3 because I keep changing my team. But um, I'm, I'm almost certain that it's 17, so maybe they've not changed that. I don't know, but either way. Uh, additionally, we've changed the functionality of matchmaking in the upper tiers of skill rating. As a player who exceeds 2200 skill rating in Division 1, your matchmaking will have hit a cap. The change is targeted to improve the overall likelihood of matchmaking in upper skill tiers and ensure that players find games both quicker and with more regularity. You will continue to calculate per your exact skill rating and your skill rating can in, 
can exceed 2200. This change is only applied to finding an opponent division rivals. I don't really understand that, and I don't really care because I'm never going to get that high anyway. Um, foot stadiums, in an effort to reduce the variance experience match to match in lighting and shadows, we've made a choice to lock in specific time of day settings for each of the stadiums in Ultimate Team, which makes perfect sense. Before each match, the game will select between day and night and will use the predetermined time of day and weather conditions to ensure priority on minimizing the impact of shadows in each stadium. That was a thing, by the way, that you could use as an advantage and still can in FIFA 19. You can turn shadows off, I believe. Now, if you pick a stadium that has extreme shadows all over the pitch, you turn them off and your opponent doesn't, your opponent is, opponent is left with a shadow-riddled stadium floor. You won't have that problem, so you'll be able to bypass it and they'll have lots of visual problems. That's now been avoided. Companion app, I don't know if I really care because I genuinely can't remember the last time I went on it. Um, they're bringing new features to help streamline the process. I'm not going to sit there and read it because this video is nearly 40 minutes long and I would have imagined that most of you will have gone by now. So I do apologize, but that is a lot of information to take in. Um, a lot, of, a lot of it is good. I, I would say that very few of it is, is, you know, turned me sour towards whatever. But the this this whole uh, objectives thing, brilliant, love it. Um, the the issue for me, right? They've the the issue for me really is they haven't made any massive changes to foot champions with regards to the not the amount of games. I don't mind the amount of games, but it's you know. If, if they could extend it to Monday at 6, for instance, how often do you like, oh, I hope they extend it this week? Everyone always says that. Why don't they just have it until Monday at 6? That would be so much better. Or Monday at midnight or whatever. Uh, but, you know, they, there's nothing on that at all. The other good... Th I mean, that's only the real negative. I was kind of hoping to get something of that nature. Uh, but... I mean, they've not added a tremendous amount, but they've added enough for me to go, do you know what? That is brilliant, and I'm happy. We didn't really need an awful lot of added like game modes to the menus and, and, and new menus. We didn't really need all that, but it's nice that they've done it. Now they need to back it up with gameplay. We haven't seen anything outside of that weird gif the, with the super fast shot coming in from Vinicius Jr. But so far, overall, to give it a review... I'm very happy with what I see. Season objectives look really good. Uh, foundations, obviously nice for people who are just starting out. Milestones look really good as well. And just a lot more to do and to work towards. And that is something that I'm very, very happy about. But like I said, uh, the jury's still out because gameplay needs to be assessed. And that isn't going to be a thing that we see for a long time. And until we get our actual hands on it, I don't think any of us are really going to be able to judge it. But if you have enjoyed this extreme long video, and if you are still here at the end, by the way, type 37 in the chat. That's all I need to know because that's the minute I'm on right now. If you have enjoyed it, those smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for you, and until the next time, goodbye.